And I am glad to announce right here today that the Watchtower organization is dead. It just hasn't fallen over yet. Amen. The monkey died. The show is over. There is, no, there is now a very dark shadow over the doorway of 25 Columbia Heights in Brooklyn, New York. For many years, they have been in the offensive mode, aggressively charging and attacking Christians eagerly and offensively. They have continued to smear, belittle, and discredit anyone who has left the watchtower. They call them the apostates. The tide has turned. The organization is now, for one of its very first time in history, is now in a defensive mode. They are defending themselves against a vast barrage of major problems. Their squeaky clean image is now being tarnished. Their public relations department is handing out roll aids in record numbers. The governing body are acting like the cruise directors on the Titanic. The frontal attack is very worrisome to the Watchtower organization. Television and radio, as well as newspapers and the internet are continuously reporting on the problems of child molestation. The media, the world on a daily basis, is covering stories that are centering around Jehovah's Witnesses. News about witnesses dying for refusing blood transfusions. Reports of Jehovah's Witnesses involved in committing murder, involved in fraud, suicides, Kingdom Hall bombings. And how many times has the Prince star, uh, the, the rock star Prince showed up on the newspaper and on the internet? And how about the Jehovah's Witness tennis champions, the Williams sisters? I mean, they're getting a lot of bad press at the watch tower. I know those last two things we mentioned, the entertainers, you say, well, how do they affect the watchtower? Well, it's very easy to see how they affect the watchtower. They're not, they're not supposed to be a rock star and be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. You're not, you're not supposed to be a professional tennis player and be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, I have no problem with rock stars or with, or with the professional tennis or any professional sport, but the watchtower really wouldn't want you to participate in this, but yet it's all over the news and it's raising a lot of questions at the headquarters. It's all bad press and it's, it's coming deep, deep, deep down upon the watchtower. Now for many years, that is for 30 years, Joan Setner, we all know her, <laughs> a, along with her band of committed Christian ministries have been working hard, very hard, to expose the Watchtower organization and offer support and spiritual truth for all those that have been touched by the tentacles of the organization. For many years though, and they'll tell you some of the early so-called apostate ministries, that's what they call them, I call them crusaders of truth, but Joan and her committed ministries had worked hard and for many years it was like a, an uphill battle. It was difficult working to try to get witnesses to come out of the organization. The Watchtower kept growing at record rates. Kingdom halls were expanding. New congregations were being formed. Kingdom hall parking lots were filled. Probably most of us can remember that, can't we? You go to the Kingdom Hall and had a hard time even finding a parking spot. And if you got to the meeting late, forget it. Especially if you had five children, like I did, my wife, we couldn't, uh, you know, you couldn't even sit together. You'd have to split up. I mean, they were packed, let's put it that way. Assemblies, conventions, same thing. You couldn't get in. If you got there late, forget it. You wouldn't get a seat either. Major building projects were undertaken. We had the Watchtower Farms built. And then they built Patterson Education Center. So things were happening. It was rocking and rolling 10, 15, 20 years ago. The early cult ministries could have easily given up. They could have said, what's the use? Well, we don't seem to be making any headway here. No, they did not give up. And they did not give in. And these early ministries did not give out. They're still with us today and they're still working just as hard as ever to try to let people realize who the real Jesus is and get them out of an organization that's ruining people's lives. Under the Lord Jesus' direction, 
these first wave, we'll call them that, cult ministries experienced an amazing blessing. God helped them with the proliferation of more Christian ministries, with more Christian soldiers to be able to help them in this battle. And they reinforced the troops as it was. So in the late 80s, early 90s, Jesus gave these ministries as well a brand new tool, a powerful weapon, a weapon to witness, a weapon to minister to Jehovah's Witnesses, to expose and enlighten the public to how dangerously false the Watchtower organization is. The weapon is tantamount like a nuclear bomb being dropped on them. They, they don't like it. It's causing much havoc. The collateral damage is pandemic. It's catastrophic. Many Jehovah's Witnesses refer to this weapon as Satan's instrument. The internet. That's exactly what we're talking here. Very, very powerful. The internet burst open the unscriptural teachings and the false doctrine of the Watchtower organization. All that is hidden is only click, a mouse click away. Isn't that true, huh? Active Jehovah's Witnesses are searching the internet. I know, I know they're searching the internet. Uh, we have a website, my wife and I, it's called the six screens of the watchtower.com. Literally thousands and thousands of people are getting into that website and telling us that it's getting them out of the organization. It's getting, it's getting so many, really. We can amen to that one, it's right, because it is working. It comes across to many as a little intense, but we had to make it that way, because it is capturing the youth. Many young witnesses are writing to us, and they're telling us that they can no longer stand being lugged off to the kingdom halls. And we're getting emails, hundreds of them. At least every day, someone writes to us and lets us know that they have had enough. So, active Jehovah's Witnesses are searching the net. Newly interested Jehovah's Witnesses are Googling in, aren't they? Just, I'll tell you what, even the Watchtower made a statement not too long ago. They told the brothers and sisters in the congregations not to Google in the term Jehovah's Witness. Don't put that in there. <laughs> and, and that's what they were told. In fact, that I believe was in a KM and it was read at the Kingdom Hall. So they went home, and that's exactly what they did. Because if you punch in to the Google search engine, Jehovah's Witnesses, an amazing thing comes up. They don't. Everything comes up but them. And that's the most amazing. Thousands and thousands of references concerning the dangers of the Watchtower organization can be found right there. Now, friends and relatives of Jehovah's Witnesses as well, you know, they want to know, hey, I have relatives of Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, why do they act like they do? But now they can find out for the first time. Hey, let's find out how Auntie Joan, let's try to find out why she acts the way she does. So that's how, that's how it works, friends. The internet is really helping the ministries to be able to examine the secret world of the Watchtower. Now, without hesitation, I will say that the controlling hierarchy at the headquarters, as we speak, are beginning to divide up the booty and get themselves out of Dodge. That's Brooklyn, New York. And they are doing that. They are making plans. A lot of the buildings, as we well know, have been sold. Very few left, if any. But they're, they're moving out of Brooklyn, New York, up to, uh, up to Patterson. And they're actually even at Kingdom Farm. They've just, I, 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 I confirm this, I have a relative that lives up there in that area and checked out some building permits. They are building uh, five or six, they're gonna add on to the Kingdom Farm as it is. They're gonna go as high as they can they're going to put about 500 apartments up there. And they're going to try to get five and six stories. And they're selling everything off in Brooklyn. And from the only thing I can see is uh, that that's being done to house. They, they know what's going on. They, they know the difficulties and the pickle that they're in right now. And they're just making future homes for all of their cronies. They know it's only a matter of time.